Do we have a joke for this one? I like your ears. Thanks. Both sets. You know, with two sets of ears, you should listen to whatever I say. I do. Okay, all right, anyway. It's no wonder you don't listen to what I say. <laughs> There's nothing in your ears. So we had a unique experience over the weekend. We went to see Star Wars A New Hope in concert. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about the concert aspect of it as we move on. But the first thing I kind of wanted to talk about was the fact that this was the first time that Lainey had ever seen the original Star Wars, which I still call Star Wars. I don't call it Episode Four, and I don't call it A New Hope. I call it Star Wars. This is the first time she saw it on the big screen in a movie theater. And I wondered what your impressions of that were. So initially, now you, you've seen this film many times, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and you've only ever seen it on TV screens or on iPads, but never in the movie theater. Right. So did you like it better, or was it the same experience for you? I liked it better on the big screen. And why was that? I noticed some things they didn't notice, and I laughed at some things that I didn't think was funny because of the audience. Okay, and that's a big aspect of what we're gonna talk about eventually is how that this is a film that is truly, I believe, meant to be seen amongst a, an audience. You, it's a, it's a, supposed to be a shared experience, and because of that, it brings the film to a different level, and it's what makes the film special. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but let me focus on something else you said you noticed things that you hadn't noticed before, which actually was true for me too, but what, what did you notice that you hadn't noticed before? Um, Jabba, I, know, I knew that he was younger, but I noticed that he didn't have that little thing that, in, I don't know what it's called. Like, in the one where Leia's chained to him, oh, the, he has- In Return the, of the Jedi. Yeah, he has the thing next to him? Or oh, the there? little creature? Oh, it's another creature. That, that's Salacious B. Crumb. And he's a small creature that in Return of the Jedi, <laughs> it's not very uh, uh, pleasant, but no. he's, supposed to, he's supposed to sit next to Jabba on Jabba's dais, and he um, gets all the crumbs that fall out of Jabba's mouth, uh, which is where his name comes from. So no, he, you're right, he isn't there. And Jabba is younger, and, and it's the Jenny Craig Jabba. He's, he's much smaller. Um, <laughs> At that point, uh, and do you know do you know the history of that scene? See, you've never you've never actually watched the original original Star Wars. This was the special edition, and we'll talk about that a little bit in a, in a second too. But in the original Star Wars, that scene isn't in there where Jabba's in the spaceport. It was filmed for the original Star Wars, and it was filmed with a man in the part. And then the idea always was that they were going to superimpose a creature. Um, Jabba's creature form over top of the man. So when they filmed it, Harrison Ford, the actor that plays Hansel, walks around the man that's playing Jabba. By the time we get to Return of the Jedi, they, they never put that, that scene in the original Star Wars. They didn't have time or they, were, they couldn't figure out the, what they wanted the creature to look like. Or, there was some reason, but it never made it in the original Star Wars. By the time we get to Return of the Jedi, the, the, the Jabba's appearance has changed from what the original sketch was. So now he's, he's slug-like and he's got that long tail. Mm -hmm. And so now that became a problem of how are we going to handle this because Harrison Ford walked around him. And so what they did is they had him step on his tail. And really, the way that Jabba is in Return of the Jedi... It, 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 the scene for me doesn't work necessarily in the original Star Wars because Han is a little too bold and brash with Jabba because w the way we see Jabba in Return of the Jedi, I don't think Han would have crossed him that way, but it works. So, okay, so that was one thing that you noticed. What else? Um, I noticed that when Leia was talking to r 2 d two, I noticed that she was recording it. Yeah, that's when she's time. recording the message. But I didn't notice that on the iPad because I didn't, I didn't, I just thought she was telling you to d 2 
what to do. She was giving him instructions, but yeah, she's recording the message for Obi for Obi Wan. That's that's interesting. And I noticed it. Cause right. Anything else? But I noticed it because she looked at the stormtroopers, and I noticed that part. And then in the message, she looked at the stormtroopers, so I was wondering if. Okay. I noticed a couple things for me. Most of what I noticed were line related things, and it's because we saw it in concert, they had the closed captioning on the screen. And for whatever reason, whenever I watch a movie that has the words, the closed captioning on it, I tend to look at the words instead of the action. And I've seen the film many times. And I caught lines that I hadn't caught before in different ways. Now, I've seen that movie 30, 40 times easily, I think more than that. And I never realized that when uh, the Millennium Falcon makes the, the jump to hyperspace to go to Alderaan, and Han comes in when Luke is practicing with the lightsaber, Han comes in, and he always said a line, but I never realized he actually said, oh, 0200 hours, we should be there by oh, 0200 hours. I never, I never caught that before. And there was another one later on. I also noticed, again, because we saw it in concert, they put an intermission in because the musicians have to, have to take a break. Because what they've done is they've taken the musical soundtrack off the film, and the, live, the, the local Philharmonic, which is very good, uh, plays the music portion live, which is, I, I thought was pretty cool. Did you like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did too. I did notice after intermission, and they took the intermission right when the Millennium Falcon is being, um, it's, the tractor beam has a hold of it and it's being sucked into the, into the Death Star. That's where they took the intermission. And I kind of thought they would actually. After that, they were just, it seemed like they were a couple measures off with the music, especially with the, the X-Wing battle, because Scenes that I, I it, it, this is what was the thing that I noticed the most, how tied to the music the sequences were for me and how when it was off, it was like watching a movie where the, the, the lip sync is off for the actors. Mm -hmm. It kind of drove me nuts a little bit in the second part. And I don't know that you would have noticed it. It's just. I it didn't just, notice the music, but when the lips are off and the actors are Absolutely. Yeah, you noticed that. But that didn't happen in this film. No. Okay, so let's talk about the fact that we were seeing it with an audience. And go back and tell me what you said again. That, that you saw it with an audience did what for you? I laughed at some things because I noticed that they were laughing and then I got the joke where I didn't get it before. Exactly. And that's very true. This is a film that really was designed to be seen in the theater. It's supposed to be a shared experience with a large audience. And it's, it's an event. And because of that, now we were watching the special edition, and I'm a diehard, you know, original version of the film person, but the special edition did not bother me at all. The scenes that would bother me if we were watching it on television did not bother me at all because I was enjoying the film I was laughing again at parts that I had, you know, not laughed at in years because I was in there with a group of people and we were all enjoying it and experiencing it together. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of fun. And even Colton caught pieces and parts and laughed in sections mm -hmm. because he got that the audience thought it was funny. So he kind of figured some things out. So the other piece of that is the, that film held up very well for being 40 years old. I mean, it still works today. It still works well. I think it's definitely a film to be seen in the theater. You don't pick it apart the way you do if you're watching it on TV. Watching it on your iPad or a mobile device or on a television screen, you are not with other people. You have the time to sit there and nitpick little things because that's, that's the experience you're having with the film. And here, we were just experiencing the film. Mm -hmm. We were having fun. We were experiencing the story and enjoying it. So would, would you say you like that film better now than you did prior to seeing it in the theater, or is it the same? Better. Okay. When we were talking about, I think it's when we were talking about The Last Jedi and I asked you what your favorite Star Wars film was, you actually said this one. You said uh -huh. the original Star Wars, and I said A New Hope, Episode Four, and you said yes. Is that, was that true at that time, and it's still mm -hmm. true now? Okay. Do you like it? You obviously said you like it better now, having seen it in the theater. Mm -hmm. And it's still your favorite? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think 
there is there is something to say about this too. When I was when I was your age, and this movie came out, and you saw, I you know, it took a, it took me a while to be able to see it in the theaters because Grandma and Grandpa didn't go to those kind of movies. I actually saw it at a drive-in. You know, they, they took me to a drive-in, so that, that was my first experience. Then seeing it in an actual theater came a few months after that when I got to go with a friend and, and his parents. But back then, you couldn't own the movie. There was no such thing as DVDs or VHS tapes or beta tapes. Beta tapes came, beta, uh, Betamax machines came about to the, to the general public about three or four years after this film came out. Because I remember the first, first thing I ever saw in a, um, the Betamax was Empire Strikes Back. We rented it from a, a, a local grocery store where you could rent uh, films. So anyway, you couldn't own the film back then. So that's why we collected. That's why you, I had every toy that I could get my hands on. I had every newspaper article that I, or magazine article that I would rip out, or if, if, if a magazine at the grocery store had Star Wars on the cover, I'd beg grandma or grandpa to buy it for me. And we, I, you collected all that because you couldn't own the movie. And that was how you could re-experience the movie. I read the comic books till, till the pages were worn thin. Uh, and then you could own the movie. So I owned it on beta, then VHS, then DVD, now Blu-ray. Um, but having owned the movie, I find that I don't pull the movie out to watch it because I know it's there. And, and back then I used to know the dialogue you know, by heart for movies that I couldn't own. But you take it for granted when you own it. And I think that's a large part of the experience of having gone to the movie theater to see it. I, I don't take the film for granted anymore. I enjoyed it. And I've gone to other films, uh, some of the Indiana Jones films and Top Gun when they were re-released many years later as part of like a Saturday Night Rewind at a local art house movie theater. Such a different experience. So from my standpoint, if you get the opportunity to go see this in the theater, any of these older movies in the theater, I say take the opportunity because again, it's meant to be seen with a big audience and it's meant to be seen on a big screen. Now let's talk real quick about the concert aspect of it. Was, did you find that distracting? Did you like it? Did you watch the orchestra or did you watch the movie? What, what, what was your experience with that for you? I liked it being played live. Okay, now did, did you, like I was saying before, I, f I focused on the words on the screen a little bit. And like I said, they had the words up there because the, the orchestra is powerful. Did you focus on the orchestra? Or did you focus on the film on the screen, or what? What were you? Where was your focus? What were you watching? I was focusing on the screen. Right, and I did too. And I didn't think that that would happen initially. I watched the orchestra at the very beginning, and of course they played the 20th Century Fox fanfare, which was awesome. That actually got a round of applause because we don't see that anymore because Disney owns the, the films now. I know they still don't own the original Star Wars, but they're you know to get the Fox fanfare is a big deal. Uh, and I was watching the orchestra at first, but then I quickly looked up and the, and the screen was higher than the orchestra, it was up above them, and I watched the film. Other than watching the words sometimes that were on the screen, I watched the film. And I would have thought that I would have been distracted, but I wasn't. And it was a really unique experience, and it actually made the film that much more uh, intimate for you. It, it was like being a part of the film because the, the music, the orchestra being there live, mm -hmm. playing kind of brought you for, into the movie even more, I thought. So. All right. Well, let's talk about the film as a film for a minute. So the original Star Wars, yummy or crummy for you? Yummy. Absolutely yummy for me. Uh, seeing the film on the big screen versus iPad screens or television screens, what would you recommend? Yummy. Yummy. So the big screen you're recommending? Yeah. And I highly recommend if you can get the opportunity to see it on the big screen, I would do that. And let's talk about the film being in concert, so seeing it with a live orchestra. Really yummy. Really yummy here too. Very unique experience. It's, it's going to be more expensive because you're paying the orchestra as well as paying to see the film. Totally worth your money if you like the films. I know they do this with other films. Uh, Mr. Jeff said he went to see E.T. or he got to see part of E.T. this way and mm -hmm. said it was great. And E.T. is one of those films, we've, we, we, we reviewed E.T. in here, uh, where the the soundtrack, and I think his words were this, it's, it's, it's an opera almost in a sense because the soundtrack of E.T. tells the story. You wouldn't even need the words. So these films, especially with these John Williams scores, 
to hear it live, to hear the score done live while the film is playing in front of you is, is quite a unique experience and well worth uh, the price of admission, in my opinion. All right. Anything else? Mm, nope. All right. So The Force was with this one? All right.